when, when Mr Blythe approached you mm -hmm. about helping the Prime Minister, did you at any point consider, given the position and the fact that you were considering and then were actively pursuing the position of Chair of the BBC, did you actually at any point consider saying simply, sorry, I can't help? Um, knowing that I'd had the conversation with him in September, when he called me up asking for the introduction to Mr Case, um, clearly, you know, I could have at that time said no. Yeah. Why didn't you? Um, because I was, uh, I felt that I could help ensure that due process was followed. Did you think of saying, I can't help because I'm in the middle of an appointments process for a very high profile public appointment, chair of the BBC, which by the way the Prime Minister will have the final say over, the very person we're talking about. What kind of an idiot do you think I am? That I can, in that, in the midst of that process, that I would think it was appropriate to get involved in an affair of this kind. Well, I could understand why, knowing as he did, that I worked in the same complex as the Cabinet Office, and um, that he wanted me to uh, uh, make uh, Mr. Case aware of both his existence and his desire to talk to Mr. Case. And I felt that actually my participation was to ensure that due process was followed mm. and that rules were followed. I'll tell you what yeah. I would have said yes. to him. I would have said, firstly, it's not my job to have anything to do with bailing out the Prime Minister and his personal finances and his unaffordable lifestyle. And I would have said, more importantly, I'm a candidate for this key public appointment. And I would have said, I'm sorry, Mr. Blythe, you're going to have to ask somebody else. Why didn't you say that? Well, that is why I proactively raised it with the Cabinet Secretary when we met. Why didn't, you, why, why didn't you say, is it, you're a member of his family, why don't you ask his brother, Joe Johnson, who chairs the board of a company on which you sit on that very same board? Why didn't you say that to him? Um, I don't know John, Joe Johnson particularly well. What I do know is that Mr Blythe is a friend of mine. Mm. Mr Blythe... He sits on the, he sits on the he chairs the board, Joe Johnson, of a company that, yeah. um, that Mr Blythe this was, is, this is a was board during, member of. This was during a very difficult time in terms of people meeting other people, as you can remember. It's, it's reported he's, he's, he's very close friends with the ex-Prime Minister, ex Minister's father and brother as well as being a family member. Didn't you think, saying, why don't you go and ask Stanley or... Rachel Johnson well, instead of asking me? He, he knew that I had been on the Financial Policy Committee of the Bank of England. He knew that I care about following the rules carefully. And he turned to me for advice in, in what would be a sensitive matter. And he uh, acted on the conversation we'd had at the dinner, where I told him that, that he needed to be in touch with the Cabinet Office. He knew that I was in the same operations, uh, physical operations, as the Cabinet Office, and he asked me if I'd put him in touch with the Cabinet Secretary, and I did. Here's what I think. Uh, it, had I been approached in this way um, about helping out financially the person considering me for and responsible for appointing me to a, a big controversial public appointment, as you've already pointed out, I wouldn't have said, sure, no problem. I think I would have heard clanging alarm bells and the dive klaxon of a submarine going on in my head at that point, knowing full well the process I was about to embark upon in relation to this public appointment. Wasn't it a monumental failure? Well, a I did judgment not, on your part to yeah. go ahead with this? I did not believe that ensuring that due process was followed was in itself a problem. Um, that's how you dress it up, but really you were, you were helping out somebody who wanted to lend money to the Prime Minister when it was not your job to do that. No, I was ensuring that Mr Case was in a position to get the advice before he would contemplate doing anything um, involving the Prime Minister. See, to me it's just inconceivable, going back to the committee, that in good faith you thought it appropriate not to reveal your involvement in Mr... Johnson's finances, albeit, as you've pointed out, at one remove uh, to the appointment panel when you were going for this job 
and then to this committee. And I think that any reasonable and fair person would come to that conclusion. Would you agree with that? Uh, I, I'm seeking to lay out the facts here. And the facts are that a fair and reasonable person would see that what I was trying to do was to ensure the due process was followed, that in fact in introducing Mr Blythe to the Cabinet Secretary, uh, or seeking to, to introduce Mr Blythe... He's just lying his head off in there. Good God, that was painful. Enough of that, sir. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs>